Attending my first ever NASCAR race was absolutely the best time of my life. Uh, seeing those Xfinity cats boogie around Texas Motor Speedway in a very chilly Dallas-Fort Worth area night. Well, Christopher Bell found Victory Lane, and that was the die cast I decided to make. Here's Christopher Bell's 2019 Playoff Texas raced win Toyota Supra. Howdy folks, it is Diecast Buffet here again, back with another NASCAR Diecast review, and Merry Christmas to all. I uh, have a little bit of a, a review here for y'all, never mind the uh, decal peeling off there, don't worry about that. Uh, here is a custom 2019 Christopher Bell Texas O'Reilly Auto Parts playoff race, race version, race winning Toyota Supra. Uh, I keep getting it confused with the Camry. I I'll be dead honest. I keep getting it confused with the Camry. This is a die cast that I've been working on for quite some time. But to be honest with you, I haven't got around to it. I've been, you know, I, I had the inspiration for it. And then I had a setback and I hit inspiration. Another setback. It just, just kind of teeter-totter. But I want to take a look at the box here. So this was my first ever NASCAR race, right? I remember being in the grandstands saying, look. Whoever wins that race right there, the O'Reilly Auto Parts 300, I'm going to make the raced version die cast. And of course, it was Christopher Bell. Now, I remember being in the hotel room. And I was like, look, I'm going to order this die cast. I ordered the stock version. I customized it. And this is what we have. So you got the Xfinity Series playoff logo there. It's kind of coming off. Don't mind that. You got the O'Reilly Auto Parts 300 from Texas Motor Speedway race title logo there. Another uh, playoff logo. Uh, raced version. Uh, then you got Christopher Bell. And I kind of like that background effect. That was actually unintentional. Uh, right here it says Joe Gibbs Racing. So putting this decal on it just made that really cool effect. Where it has Joe Gibbs Racing underneath it. I freaking love that. That was a unintentional effect. You can kind of see like the Joe Gibbs Racing logo kind of like shadowed behind the Christopher Bell. And I got to be honest with you, I love that effect. Uh, so you got raced version, Christopher Bell. You got the die cast here. Go over here to the side. You got the Xfinity race winner sticker. Uh, you got NASCAR there. You got uh, my logo, die cast buffet right there with the action racing collectible logo would be. Uh, O'Reilly Auto Parts 300. This is something that I did as well. I put the, all the race stats just like Lionel Racing does. So you got O'Reilly Auto Parts 300, November 2nd, 2019. Time of race. Two hours, 34 minutes, and 27 seconds. Started third place. Total laps, 200, 300 miles. I got to admit, man, this is a domination race. 101 laps. I mean, this dude led half the freaking race, man. Nine cautions. It, I'll be honest with you. Even though Christopher Bell dominated in this, the lap sled, it was actually a really action-packed race. There was so many cautions. I can't tell you how many Xfinity races I've watched, and there was only like one non-stage caution. The first Xfinity race I go to, nine cautions, 51 laps. I mean, you've seen guys like Gregson, Tyler Reddick, David Starr. I mean, there was just so many cats. I think it was David Starr. It was whoever was driving the, the, the Waterburger car. I think it was the 51 joint that thing was sliding i think it was david star uh that thing slid right in front of us man they had the red flag even chastain was up front leading laps then man I, I tell you it was it was a f it was a fun night in the dallas fort worth area and wow if you've never watched the xfinity race texas motor speedway don't go to the spring race go to the fall race the xfinity spring race has cup drivers and that is a that is a cup dominated event it's like the charlotte spring race it's it's a washout every year all the big name cup drivers enter it go to the playoff one even if you don't give a hoot about the playoffs at least it's only it's the uh, the regulars not so much the oh it's kyle harvick competing for their 700th xfinity win uh they got die cast buffet there Texas Motor Speedway did nothing with the bottom of the box because that's just legal jargon. Who cares about that? Over here on the roof. I really like this. Uh, a little bit of a tear right there on the decal, but it says raced version, and you kind of have the, the diecast buffet logo. And ironically enough, the, the car that won this race um, was red, white, and black. That's the same logo as this diecast buffet. And that's the same color as the race version logo. It's kind of funny how it all tailored together. Let's go ahead and get this bad boy out of the box. Shades of the good old, um, the, the old 
2003-2002 era, you know, um, ARC uh, die casts, uh, when they actually had, like, the logos printed on the plastic box. Now, I'm going to take it out of this, don't worry. Uh, but I just will say, I'm going to have to put it on a base. So I wanted to leave it in this for two things. I wanted to show the bottom of it. I won't be able to pick it up because this does have weathered effects to it. If I if I touch it and grab it, it could rip the decals off. It could uh, damage it. So I'm going to be extremely careful with this. Uh, but I wanted to show the bottom of the car. Now, I know it's it, it might be hard to see, but you can see the, uh, the silver that's painted. What I did was is I painted it silver. And then I added a weather effect, right? I added a weather effect, so it wasn't as shiny. It kind of dulled it down, but it added like a black uh, kind of tint to it. And what that did is it kind of gave it like a dirt grime kind of effect. And I really liked that. Uh, so that's what I did. I did a little wash underneath the car. Uh, but now, I'm going to get it out of the plastic once again. I'm going to have to be extremely careful with it. I'll have to put it on a base and then do the review from there. Let's continue. All right, folks, so here is the car. I literally just broke my tripod accidentally, so I do apologize, but um, I was able to kind of get a little bit of a camera setup going. So here is the die cast itself. Now, you can see right here, I do have the playoff uh, stickers. I add those, the, the eight wins for Christopher Bell. On the other side, it has seven. You'll see that a little bit later. Uh, but here, you know, it, it's the same car that he, he it's the same paint scheme. Uh, pretty much almost exact contingencies as the normal primary paint scheme. The main difference, though, is, of course, I added the playoff banner. Uh, I added the number eight round of eight logo. You got the playoff stickers there. Playoff spoiler. And, of course, a playoff splitter. Go ahead and kind of rotate the car here. So, over here on the nose, you can kind of see like a dirty windshield. Uh, that's because I weathered uh, the front windshield. But, yeah, you can see the, you got the Xfinity... Uh, playoff banner there you have the nose which has the red playoff splitter you have a little bit of like some uh, dirt and whatnot kind of on the uh, the front fascia here you can kind of see a little bit of some specs uh, so that adds a little bit more detail and once again I do apologize for the camera angle uh, I'm trying to actually make this work I'm using a little bit of inspiration from race day 2011 to get this review in I was trying to get my tripod to kind of like rotate a certain way and it literally took a fat L, so <laughs> you kind of see a little bit of some dirt and grime over here on the left front. I think I added just a tad too much. Uh, I should have used a different material because uh, there is a little bit of like a tire rub, just a small little sliver of uh, like a black mark. Like he maybe made a little bit of contacts on pit road or something. Not nothing severe, just a little bit of contact. But you can see the round of eight decal. Uh, just so many little contingencies all around this die cast and. You know, this was my first ever NASCAR race. You know, it was a, it was a chilly Saturday night in Dallas, Fort Worth. Man, let me tell you, it was a great time, though. It was the best time of my life. If you've never seen a NASCAR race, if you always told yourself, look, I can't do it, it's too expensive, or it's it's not worth it, or people will judge me, do it. Just go for it, man. It's, it's, the, best, it's the best experience of my life. I freaking love it. And I'll try to pan the lighting a little bit. But you can kind of see a little bit inside the car here. And you can see that. You see those bars there? That's the, the roll cage, right? I painted all of that. You can even see a little bit of the dashboard. You can see some red. You can see some silver. That's all parts that have been actually painted. Um, I even painted the fender well. Now, you probably won't be able to see that. But the little curvature that's over here in the left and right rear... It's actually painted as well. So the entire um, interior of this car is pretty much detailed. I slide the car away to the back of it. You can just see a very nice uh, very nice line I was able to get here uh, with the uh, the playoff spoiler. Surprise, that actually worked out. You can see a little bit of dirt and grime. Not much. This was a really clean uh, race to win die cast, I might add. Like, there's really not much to it. Um, one big thing, though, I had to do was side skirts. So on the original die cast, uh, has a different side skirt than what he ran at Texas. So you can see right here, that side skirt's a different color than the actual side of the car. That's because the side skirt is paint and the actual car, you know, is something different. That little speck down there, that's supposed to resemble uh, the, the exhaust kind of smoke and whatnot. Because this was a uh, car that, you know, of course, you know, white with the exhaust, you know, it kind of just smears onto it. But you can see right here how, notice that little black arch there. How it doesn't go all the way to the bottom right and now notice on this side how the black arch actually goes all the way down to the bottom 
Now, on this die cast, believe it or not, the entire arch, the side skirts, everything was all black, right? And to some point, it looks good, but to be honest with you, I think this actually looks better. It's a small detail, but this is according to the race win die cast. That's what's important. Uh, the race version die cast had this change, so it was important to add that as a detail. You can see a little bit of dirt and grime on the tires as well. Not, not much, but you can see a little bit of detail, you know, kind of just picking up. Uh, dirt and debris around the speedway there was a lot of caution though so there's a lot of uh, speedy dry there's a lot of smoke a lot of different things like that some people they might say it's just a Christopher Bell die cast he puts some decals on it blah 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 they don't get to see the behind the scenes work if you follow me on Instagram at diecast buffet you would know the detail I put into this car now when I build a custom more times than not I invest an entire week maybe even a month building one car now, that's not because I'm extremely lazy, it's because I have YouTube work. I have to work at an actual job, and then I have to do YouTube work. That extra free time I could be building customs, I spend on making videos like this. And that's why you see diecasts being produced so slowly, but I detailed the heck out of this man. I mean, it, it, look, you might not be able to see all the work that went into it, but let me tell you, man. I had to get the diecast, I had to strip the diecast, had to... Oh my god, I had to hand-paint the details on the interior. How to custom-make the logos. I mean, that round of eight logo, I had to custom-make it. That name better. That's all custom. That's all done by me. I didn't go to some schmo's template or something and steal it from a note. That is all me. Um, the, the spoiler and the splitter, I had to figure out a way to paint that. I will say, though, um, I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not. But there is a slight uh, little bit of a chip right there on the deck lid. That's actually because whenever I was painting the die cast, uh, I had a little bit of an oopsie. Let's just call it that. And I tried to scrape off the paint and it didn't work. So like I said, man, it's it's completely imperfect, but I got it as close as I could. Now there is some contingencies like right here where it says ream.com. There's supposed to be like a purple heart between uh, the, the, the wind stickers and the ream.com. This is as close as I could making this die cast into the race version die cast you know i'm not gonna go shell out twenty dollars to a die cast custom maker to say look i need a christopher bell die cast that has 600 percent perfect contingencies if you buy a die cast before daytona i will almost bet you it will not be to the spec 1000 percent accurate there's going to be a color change there's going to be a slight decal change there's going to be a, a slight associate sponsor change it happens you know as my good buddy race day 2011 said once the design is once the design for the die cast is sent to Lionel racing hands off right hands off the die cast company cannot they can't breathe on it without the team's written consent because there's so many legal factors you have the copyrights of the team the trademarks the logos the branding the Chevrolet the Ford the Toyota then you got the brands the actual sponsors because if you manipulate the color on a Quaker State die cast, and Quaker State does not like that color because it resembles another brand too closely, you're going to find yourself in a lawsuit because they're paying money to have that thing made, and you're screwing it up. So it's as soon as the team says, okay, this is what we want, you can't breathe on it. And that's why you see a lot of schemes like the Austin Dillon number, chain, number color change for 2019, uh, the Chase Elliott, sometimes you'll see some of his cars, the die cast may be darker than the actual thing. It's because it's hands off. As soon as the team gives them the A-OK, -okay, they start producing it. But yeah, guys, that is pretty much it for this review. I'm sorry it is not the best. Um, look, literally, I was trying to get my thing uh, fixed. And I will, I will show you kind of what the situation is right here. So you see the little piece right there? Well, let me show you uh, the, the business end of it. Check this out. Boom, it does it because it's broke anywho guys thank you all so much for watching this die cast review once again guys i, I apologize for um the the die cast reviews in the future will not be like this i promise you guys i'll be making i'll get the new tripod and all that stuff so don't worry um got a lot of christmas stuff to do later today so uh, thank you all so much for watching i hope you're having an amazing time with your family and friends it's the holiday season let your worries behind you relax drink a nice cup of coffee and I uh, tell, tell, tell your good old boss, hey, man, I'm taking a day off. 
Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you never miss any of my new content. Guys, let's hit 1,000 subscribers by 2020. It would be the best Christmas present I could pretty much ask for, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you're having a great one. Merry Christmas and Diecast Buffet signing off.